So, good morning class. Uh, today's lesson will be section 3 of chapter 2. Uh, remember, section 3 talks about the obligations of the partners with regard to third persons. So, the first uh, topic that we have to discuss is the right and duty to operate under a firm or partnership uh, name. So, remember class, in 1815, uh, ano ang sabi ng law? Dapat ang isang partnership, meron siyang partnership name. If you remember class article 1768, ano ang sabi niya? Uh, yung partnership has a juridical personality separate and distinct from the partners which comprise it. So, yun ang tandaan nyo. Dahil nga may separate uh, personality ang partnership with the uh, persons who comprise it, kailangan meron tayong paraan para ma-distinguish yung mga partner from the partnership. And also, to add to this, kailangan din nating ma-distinguish yung partnership from other partnerships, from corporations, and even from uh, sole proprietorships. So, yun ang uh, dahilan kung bakit merong, kailangan merong pangalan yung partnership. So, in uh, 1768, sabi, um, pagka meron tayong partners, uh, tatlo sila, A, B, and C, remember also that uh, new juridical personality is created, which is that of the partnership. So, yung pang-apat na tao is the partnership of A, B, and C. Kailangan may pangalan sila to facilitate business transactions by the partnership. So, yun ang tandaan natin sa 1815. How about the next one? Uh, 1816 and 18... Um, 17, I think, talks about uh, yung provision ng itiksud uh, uh, talks about the liability to third persons. So, remember in 1816, anong sabi niya? Each partner has a uh, liability up to their exclusive property. So, this will apply obviously to a general partner only. So, ang mga uh, general partners, they are liable even up to their exclusive or separate properties for uh, liabilities of the partnership. So, ang kailangan yung tandaan dito, all the partners are personally liable here and also the liability is jointly or pro rata. Now, if you will um, translate the term pro rata, ang, kadaw, ang kanya daw literal translation is um, proportionately. So, yun ang talagang um, literal meaning ng pro rata, proportionately. So, proportionately to the capital contribution. But here, remember, in case of 1816, and in case of liability to third persons, hindi proportionate ang tinitignan natin. Ang sinasabi ng law, ang pro rata na ibig sabihin sa 1816 is joint and equal. So, if the liability of the partnership to a third person or to a creditor is 10,000, tapos uh, apat silang partner, each partner, uh, has a liability to the third person of 2,500 pesos. It's, it does not matter if magkakaiba sila ng contribution or even if one of them is an industrial partner. Basta pagdating sa third person, uh, ang liability is joint and equal. So kung 10,000 ang liability, ang apat na partners jointly and equally liable to a third person. Actually, class, diniscuss na natin to sa uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1797, um, 70, if I'm not mistaken, doon natin siya uh, discuss. So, uh, pagkadating sa third persons, remember class that the partners are always liable, including industrial uh, ones. Kaya industrial partner, magbabayad siya sa third person or uh, creditor. But remember, uh, an industrial partner is excluded from losses. How? In case of, uh, after payment of liability, remember, your um, industrial partner is allowed to recover or reimburse from the capitalist partner whatever he has paid as liability to third persons. In that case, exempted siya sa losses. But, hindi pwedeng ma-exempt from liability. And liability is again, joint and equal. Yan. What else do you have to remember? Also, this is an exception to, not really an exception, this is a qualification to Article 1816. So, in 1817, sabi, the parties can agree that one or more of them can be exempted from liability. Yan. Pero question, di ba sabi sa 1816, hindi pwedeng ma-exempt sa liability? All of them are liable. Sabi pa nga, even industrial partners are liable. Tapos bigla, sabi sa 1817, 
pwedeng magkaroon ng um, stipulation contrary to the prorata and um, subsidiary liability imposed under 1816. Yan. So, remember class, pwedeng mag-stipulate but the rule is pwedeng mag-stipulate na exempted ang isang partner sa liability. Remember here, applies to capitalist, applies to industrial. But remember class, as to third persons, this stipulation is void. So, in so far as the third person is concerned, wala siyang pakialam sa stipulation ninyo. Kung may tatlong partners A, B, and C, in-exclude natin si A sa liability, yung nag-agree nag yung tatlo, that A is, is excluded from liability. Kung ako ay creditor, I do not care about your agreement. As to me, the agreement is void. So, ngayon, as among partners, remember, this agreement is valid and enforceable as among partners. So, later on, pagka siningil ng creditor si A, B, and C, kailangan magbayad ni A, B, and C ng joint and equal share sa liability. But later on, pagka sila-sila na lang, dahil meron nga silang valid and enforceable agreement that A is exempted, B and C, they have to reimburse A. Yun ang kailangan yung tandaan. Void as to third persons, valid as to partners. So, that is uh, 1817 talks about stipulations against liability. How about uh, 1818? In 1818, the law talks about the duty and the right of a partner to act as an agent. So, ang kailangan yung tandaan, again, uh, partnership is a relationship, mutual trust, and mutual trust and confidence. Each partner will act uh, uh, for his own benefit and also as agent of the partnership. So, pagka ang isang partner acts an, as an agent of the partnership, pwede siyang pumasok sa mga kontrata with third persons. Because obviously, class, hindi naman makakapasok yung partnership sa contract with third persons dahil siya isang juridical personality. So, kailangan niya nang magre-represent sa kanya. Sino itong mga ito? Yung mga natural uh, persons na yung mga partners. So, each partner is an agent for the partnership. Now, question. Pagka pumasok ba ang isang partner sa isang um, transaction with a third person, the question is, is it binding on the partnership? Liable ba ang partnership para sa transactions na pinasukan ng isang partner? So, the answer is again found in Article 1818. Very simple. Sabi niya, liable ang partnership if the partner acting is expressly or impliedly authorized. Obviously, let us say meron tayong partnership. Ang um, partnership natin is um, business is a water refilling station. So, anong ginagawa natin? Bibili tayo ng mga water bottles, tapos i-refill -re natin. Pagka may dumarating na client, nire-refill natin yung mga water bottles nila. Ganyan, pinupurify natin yung tubig, etc. etc. That is the business of um, uh, water purifying uh, establishment. So, yan. So, anyway, A, B, and C are partners in this partnership. Yun ang business nila. Habi ni B and C kay A, A, bumili ka ng um, mga water bottles. Yan. So, bumili si A. Now, remember class that if A enters into a contract with the seller of the water bottles, this is a binding contract on the partnership. Partnership is liable to pay seller doon sa kinuha ni partner, acting partner na mga water bottles. Bakit? A is expressly authorized. How about uh, implied authorization? So, remember in case of implied authorization, the act is binding if the other partners do not object even though they have knowledge of the act. So let us say same partnership, bigla itong si A bumili siya ng um, videoke machine. Yan, videoke. Wow, talagang may connect dun sa business yung videoke. No? So anyway, uh, si A bumili siya ng videoke machine, nilagay niya dun sa establishment, nakita ng ibang partners, they do not object. So remember here class that um, if ito ay intended for partnership use, uh, and also ginamit din ng partnership, remember that this is binding on the partnership. Kasi alam na nila, alam na ni B and C, nakita na nila, they do not object even if 
this uh, item has nothing to do with the partnership business. A here is impliedly authorized because the partners failed to object to his uh, transaction. So this is binding on the partnership. Partnership has to pay seller of videoke machine who is a third person. What else? Number two, uh, impliedly authorized din also ang isang partner who does uh, anything which is for apparently carrying on in the usual way the business of the partnership. Kadaming sinabi, ano? Pero para madali, an act which is usual to the business. Kung itong business nyo, ano ang usual? Uh, in our example, what is usual? Yung pagbili ng videoke o yung pagbili ng water bottles? Diyos ko, very simple class. Ang pagbili ng videoke, ay hindi, ang pagbili ng water bottle is... Um, water bottle is usual to the partnership who is engaged which is engaged in the business of purifying water so kung usual ang transaction remember it is binding on the partnership question what if hindi naman talaga authorized si uh, A na bumili ng water bottles bumili siya is it binding on the partnership? Yes, it is binding even if A is not actually authorized. Bakit? Because it is usual to the business. And also, here's what you have to remember para maging binding siya. Third party is in good faith. So the seller of the water bottles here must be unaware that A is actually not authorized by the partnership to so buy yung mga water bottles. How about uh, number two? Um, this is almost the same as letter B is almost the same as number two. So if the act is on behalf of the partnership in the ordinary course of business, again, an act is usual. Um, it is binding on the partnership. Yan ang tanda nyo. What else? Also, acts which are not binding on the partnership. Ibig sabihin, these uh, transactions do not bind the partnership. So, pagka pinasukan ng acting partner to, walang liability ang partnership. Number one, if the act is, ito, if the act is usual in the business, but the partner is not authorized, and the third party is in bad faith. So, A is, si A bumili siya ng water bottles, the uh, the transaction is usual in the business but he is actually not authorized and remember also that the seller of the water bottles alam niya na hindi authorized si A so in this case what you have to remember is the act is not binding not binding on the partnership so here the act is usual but the act is unauthorized and also, the third person is in bad faith, not binding. Usual, unauthorized, bad faith of third person, not binding. What else? If the act is, again, not usual, and the partner has no authority. So, here, class in number two, or letter B, the good faith or bad faith of the third person is immaterial. Because number one, the transaction is not usual. And number two, it is not authorized. So even if the third person is not aware of the bad faith or good faith, or even if the third person is in good faith, even if the third person is in good faith, the transaction is not valid on the partnership. Number one, uh, unauthorized and number two unusual Yan. what else meron pa pala article 1818 enumerates the acts not for uh, apparently carrying on in the usual business of the partnership please take note go Cesar so number one assign partnership property for interest for creditors or on the assignee's promise to pay the debts of the partnership so remember class uh, hindi ito um Hindi ito usual sa business na i-assign yung partnership property kasi ibinibigay mo na siya sa creditors. So, yun ang hindi ito usual. And remember here, class, that um, pagka hindi usual yung act, remember, 
it is not binding on the partnership until there is unanimous consent of all of the, the partners. What else? Number two, dispose of the goodwill of the business. So the, the, the one of the partners, bebenta niya yung pangalan ng business. So, or uh, ang kailangan yung tandaan dito, class, this is again not a uh, usual uh, usual me method of carrying on the business. Kasi nga, binenta mo na nga yung kanyang goodwill, binenta mo yung pangalan niya. So, ano pang pa gagamitin ng partnership? Hindi ito usual. To be binding on the partnership, it has to be unanimous consent of all of the partners. What else? Do any other act which would make it impossible to carry on in, in the ordinary business of the partnership? Like, for example, in the example which I just gave you, binenta niya yung... Um, purifying machine, yan. Hindi ko alam kasi kung anong tawag talaga doon. So here, it would make it impossible to carry on in the ordinary business of the partnership. Ano pang gagamitin mo para mag-purify ng tubig? That's why this is an act which is not usual. And to be binding on the partnership, it has to be with the consent of all of the partners in the partnership. What else? Confess a judgment. This is an admission of liability. Para maging binding sa partnership, it must be again unanimous consent of all of the partners. What else? Um, enter into a compromise. So, nakikipag-areglo ang partnership regarding a claim uh, it has or a liability against it. Kung i-compromise yan, this is again not usual in the business. Needs the consent of the all of the partners. What else? Also, um, number six, submit a partnership claim for or liability for arbitration. So, arbitration is parang may... Uh, arbiter ang tawag nila para siyang judge so he will decide on the merits or of the claims uh, of the partnership so kung liable ang partnership or pwede niyang makuha yung kanyang claim i-decide ng arbiter yan so here class not again usual needs the consent of all of the partners what else renounce a claim of a partnership so in renunciation remember when they waive na ng partnership yung kanyang right doon sa claim na yan that's why this is not usual uh, kaya ito ay kailangan ng unanimous consent of all of the partners. What else do you have to remember? In 1819, this is this talks about um, sale of uh, real property in the partnership. Uh, by the way, class, ito, sinadya ko talaga. Uh, for uh, partnership or yung tungkol sa firm name, uh, yung ating unang topic, 1815, uh, kung nakaabot kayo sa uh, portion na to class, Remember, for our discussion on Saturday, please read uh, SEC Memorandum uh, Circular Number 13, Series of 2019. Uh, we will discuss that these are the rules in choosing a name for your partnership as well as for corporations, actually. So, um, basahin nyo yan. Um, hindi discuss natin yan. I think it's two, three pages. If I'm not mistaken, you can find it online. Huwag kayong magchat-chat sa akin at tatanungin kung saan siya makikita at huwag yung hingin sa akin yung link, mag-effort naman kayo. ano So, remember, I will repeat, SEC Memorandum Circular Number 13 Series of 2019. Talks about the rules in choosing a partnership or corporate name. So, didiscuss natin yan on Saturday. So, anyway, uh, let's go back to 1819. A conveyance of real property. Again, real property is our immovable properties. Lupa, bahay, etc., etc. Condominium building. These are real property. So, obviously, this real property belongs to the partnership. And conveyance, meaning it is sold to a buyer. Now, um, 1819 talks about the rules in selling real property by a partner. So, ang tanong naman sa 1819, is the sale of the partner to the buyer a valid sale? Yan ang tanong dyan. So, anyway, these are the rules. Lima to, actually. So, let's take the first one. Yung pangalan ng property, yung title niya is in the name of the partnership. Binenta ng isang partner and ang ginamit niyang uh, pangalan dun sa deed of sale is the name of the partnership. So, in short, this partner is selling on behalf of the partnership. Now, what is the rule? The general rule is that title to the third person or the buyer passes. 
the title passes to the third person or the to the buyer. Bakit? Kasi remember, partnership name at ang nagbenta ay partnership. So, obviously, yung bumili ay magkakaroon ng title. Kasi kung sino yung nagbebenta, siya rin yung, eh, sino yung may-ari, siya rin ang nagbenta. However, class, the partnership has a right to recover in two cases. Number one, um, when the act is not ordinary. Yan. So, if the sale of the land is not in the ordinary business of the partnership. By the way, class, ano bang partnership ang ordinary ang pagbebenta ng lupa? Obviously, a real estate partnership. So, kung ang partnership nyo is real estate partnership, ibig sabihin yan, ordinaryo na magbenta kayo ng lupa. What about if, in case again, your partnership is a water purifying station? Is it ordinary to sell land belonging to the partnership? Obviously, this is not uh, uh, usual or ordinary. Now, in number one, remember class, uh, this talks about partnerships na hindi real estate. So, hindi ordinary sa kanila na magbenta ng lupa. So, here class, remember, in number one, the partnership can recover. Kasi yung pagbebenta ng lupa is not ordinary. Pwedeng ma-recover ng partnership yan. Um, what else? Number two, when the buyer has knowledge of the fact that the partner seller uh, has no authority to sell even though it is in the usual course of business tinatakpang ko yung ibang mga ano no yung mga ibang nakasulat anyway eh pala ko eh so anyway ano ba yun so uh, remember here class that the third person buyer is in bad faith so yung this talks about your real estate partnership so in a real estate partnership again it is usual to sell land because because it is a real estate partnership now, if the buyer is aware na itong binentang lupa ay hindi dapat ibenta, uh, the partnership can recover. So, let us say isang partnership A, B, and C, marami siyang lupa na ibinibenta. So, sabi ng partnership, eh, sabi ng partners A and B kay C, C, ibenta mo lahat ng lupa except yung lupa sa San Vicente. Yan, kung saan maraming COVID-17 and counting. Anyway, Hulaan nyo kung anong binenta ni Sina Lupa. Sa dami ng lupa ng partnership, hulaan nyo, ang binenta ni CI, yung lupa sa San Vicente, na bawal ibenta. So, remember, this is usual. But, remember also that, um, ito ay, kung ang si CI ay walang authority to sell, and also the buyer is aware that C has no authority, or the buyer is in bad faith, the partnership can recover the property. So, that is, what you have to remember about um, number one, ang titulo na sa pangalan ng partnership, nung binenta, ang seller ay partnership din. So, as a general rule, the title will pass to the buyer. But there is a right to recover when it is not, number one, ordinary, except when all of the, the partners consent. And number two, um, if it is uh, ordinary, a uh, usual, but unauthorized, and the third person is in bad faith. How about number two, uh, letter B? Uh, title is in the name of the partnership, and a partner sells it using his own name. So here, obviously, una pa lang may defect na. Bakit? Ang nagbebenta ay hindi yung may-ari. Diyan pa lang mapapaisip na kayo. Magkakaroon ba ng legal title ang buyer dyan? So, remember here, anong sabi ng law? Walang legal title, but equitable title is transferred. So, again, take note of the definition of equitable title. So, imperfect and unenforceable right. But it is recognized under the principle, principles of equality and remember here that it is convertible to a legal right. So remember, equitable title is um, convertible to a legal right because according to Article 1357, if you will remember in your uh, contracts, ay, 
you will not remember in your contracts. But in Article 1357, remember, if the sale is uh, already enforceable, uh, meaning there's a simple defect, kulang sa writing, etc., etc., um, the parties, uh, the buyer can compel the uh, seller to execute the proper document or the proper form so that uh, the sale will be registrable. The same is true here, class. In case of equitable title, um, kama equitable title ng isang buyer, he can compel yung partners sa isang partnership to execute the correct document so that he can, uh, yung kanyang equitable title will ripen into legal title. So let us say here, title is in the name of the partnership. Kitang-kita nyo naman. But it is conveyed by a partner in his own name. Partner lang ang nagbenta. So if this is the case, remember, yung buyer can ask that the partnership or yung mga, all of the partners, um, they will execute another document so that yung, mas, yung tamang deed of sale para yung kanyang equitable title will ripen into a legal title. So, dun sa pangalawang deed of sale, malamang-lamang, uh, the partnership is already uh, represented properly. So, yun ang kailangan nating tandaan sa uh, equitable title. So, provided here, partner acting must be within the scope of his authority and transfer is in the usual course of business. So, tandaan nyo, magkakaroon din lang ng equitable title if the transfer is authorized and also the transfer is um, usual in the course of the business of the partnership. So, what else do you have to remember here? A buyer is not even entitled to equitable interest if, number one, um, if the business, uh, if the sale of the land is unusual and um, yun nga, the partnership here is not a real estate partnership. So, if Yung pagbenta ng lupa noong water refilling station natin, di ba, ito ay unusual. So, remember, dahil unusual to, walang, hindi magkakaroon ng equitable interest yung uh, buyer. So, what else? Number two, uh, if the buyer had knowledge of the partner seller's lack of authority, although the seller was, the sale was made in the usual course of business. Again, Usual ang sale, meaning it is a real estate partnership, but the third person or the buyer is aware that the partner seller is actually not authorized to uh, sell you own property na yon. Uh, What else we have to remember in number three, letter C, ang scenario naman dito is title is in the name of one or more, but not all of the partners, and there is no disclosure of the right of the partnership. So yung titulo ng lupa, nakapangalan sa isa, dalawa, pero hindi sa lahat ng partners. And there is no indication that there is a partnership existing or that the property is owned by actually a partnership. And what else? Conveyance is in the name of the partner or partner in whose, the, in whose name the title stands. So again here, yung magbebenta is kung sino yung nakapangalan sa title. So here again, clue, ang yung seller ay ang owner. So, obviously, here, class, uh, title passes to third persons. Meron na namang legal title yung buyer. But, again, subject to recovery if, number one, uh, the act is not usual to the business unless all other partners consent. What else? Um, number two, uh, pwede ring i-recover if the buyer has is in bad faith even if it is the sale is usual. So, yun ang tatandaan nyo. Uh, if you remember the rule in letter A, this is the same rule. Magka-partner yan. Uh, A and uh, C. How about the next um, scenario? In the next scenario, remember, the title is in the name of one or more or all of the partners or pwede ring third person ang nakapangalan sa titulo ng lupa in trust for the partnership. So, it is actually the partnership who owns this land but it is... Um, titled to a different individual or a third person. And here, again, the sale is made by a partner in his own name or in the name of the partnership. So, here, again, there is a defect in the sale because yung nagbenta, maaaring hindi siya yung uh, may-ari. Hindi siya yung lumilitaw na owner sa title. That's why, again, here in letter D, only equitable title is transferred to the buyer. But before equitable title is transferred to the buyer, remember, 
the partner acting must uh, must have acted within the scope of his authority and the transfer is usual. So, para may equitable title po tayo, usual and number two, authorized. What else? Um, also, there is no equitable title if the sale is not usual. Yan ang tandaan natin. Kahit equitable title, wala if the sale is not usual. Yung, yung nakapangalan sa titulo, hindi na nga siya yung nagbenta. Tapos, it is not also usual in the business of the partnership. So, malamang-lamang, even equitable title, wala yung buyer. What else? Number two, if the buyer had knowledge that the partner seller is not authorized. So, and it, even if it is made in the usual course of the business of the partnership. So, here, buyer is in bad faith. He is aware of the lack of authority of the partner seller, even if it is usual in the business. Again, letter D is similar to letter B. Sila yung magka-partner. Lastly, here class, it can happen also that the title is in the name of all of the partners. So, there is a property owned by the partnership. Yung, title dun sa ti yung pangalan sa title na yan is the name of all of the partners. And the conveyance or the deed of sale is exec executed by all of the partners. So, here, lahat ng partners ay Nasa, ang pangalan ay nasa titulo. Lahat ng partners ay pumirma sa deed of sale. So, obviously, legal title passes. Is it recoverable? In this case, remember class, there is no recovery. So, anyway, uh, that's it for conveyance of real property. Uh, we will have examples during our class on Saturday. So, maganda kayo sa mga examples. Uh, dapat you have to determine whether or not it is legal title which will be transferred or it is equitable title, whether or not uh, the property can be recovered. What else? Also, remember admissions, 1820 talks about admissions. So, in case of admissions, a partner is duty-bound. A duty There is a duty to be bound by admissions or representations made by a partner. So, pagka may representation ang isang partner, it binds the partnership. Yun lang ang ibig sabihin yan. So anyway, admission by a partner, this is the general rule, is also an admission against the partnership. So if a partner admits liability uh, of the partnership, remember this is an admission against the partnership. Um, also, remember that an admission or representation made by any partner concerning partnership affairs within the scope of his authority is evidence also against the partnership. So, admission against the partnership, admission, evidence against the partnership. So, anyway, before um, admissions are binding on the partnership, these are the conditions. Number one, the person who makes the admission is a partner in an existing partnership. What else? Number two, admission concerns partnership affairs. And number three, Admission must be made within the scope of the authority of the partner making the admission. So, authorize siya to make such admission. So, this class are the rules regarding admissions. So, number one, uh, admissions by a party as testified by a third person are, are admissible in evidence against him in litigation. So, remember here, a partner will make an admission and a third person will testify na narinig niya itong admission na to, etc., etc., Remember that is evidence against the partner who made uh, the admission in case there is a case filed in court. What else? In number two, uh, admissions by another are received against a party if the former is acting in the capacity of agent of the latter. So here, what you have to remember is that any admission made during the existence of the partnership is binding against the partnership and also the partners if it concerns partnership affairs and it is authorized. What else? Number three, um, partner makes admissions for himself only without purporting to act without purporting to act for the partnership. He is alone chargeable with his admission. So here in number three, ang admissions ng na ginawa ng partner does not relate to the uh, affairs of the partnership. So para sa kanya yon personal niya. Obviously, the partnership will not be charged for such admissions. How about 1821? 
1821 talks about knowledge and uh, notice. So remember here, class, that um, a partnership has a duty to uh, give effect to notice. So pagka binigyan mo ng notice ang isang partner, it is notice to the partnership. And also, the knowledge of one partner is the knowledge as a general rule of the partnership. So anyway, please take note of the definition of knowledge as well as notice. Uh, if you read your book, the definition is found in a different uh, provision. If I'm not mistaken, 1830. Uh, Hindi ko na masyadong kabisado yung mga uh, provisions. So anyway, uh, 1833, that is the provision where you will find yung definition ng knowledge as well as a uh, notice so anyway um ano ang effect ng isang notice na binigay sa isang partner or merong knowledge ang isang partner tungkol sa isang bagay so uh remember class here halos magkapareho lang naman to ang notice sa isang ang, ang knowledge ng isang partner if it relates to partnership affair is knowledge of the partnership what else here in number two, notice given to a partner while already a partner is noticed to the partnership. Again, if it relates to partnership affairs. So, yun ang kailangan nating tandaan. It's the same thing. Pagka may notice, may knowledge, it relates to partnership affairs. It is notice to the partnership, knowledge of the partnership. So, please class, remember the three cases of knowledge. So, the first one is knowledge of a partner who is acting in the particular matter involved acquired while a partner. So remember here, the acting partner acquires knowledge of a particular thing while he is involved on sa matter na yon. And remember class that this is knowledge by knowledge of the partnership. What else? Number two, uh, there is also knowledge of a partner who is acting in a particular matter involved or pwede ring prior to the time that he is involved in the partnership, provided that this information is present to his mind or he remembers the same. So, uh, the example in your book is actually very nice. Um, sabi niya, A, acting for the partnership, bumili siya ng isang par parcel of land from D. So, this is a purchase by the partnership. Um, before uh, the sale, prior to this uh, sale or purchase from uh, D, noong parcel of land by the partnership, A is already aware that there is a possible uh, controversy regarding yung parcel of land na binibili from D. Because let us say class, like in the example, E is claiming the parcel of land. So itong si A, alam na niya na may issue dun sa lupa ni D. But in representation of the partnership, binili pa rin niya yung um, particular parcel of land. So anyway, to cut the story short, anyway, you can read the example in your book. He was able to claim yung parcel of land. So nawala yung parcel of land from the partnership. Here class, remember that the knowledge of A, uh, in who is the acting partner, uh, is also knowledge of the partnership. So... Remember, class, that here, D is not uh, liable. So, alam naman, nila na, alam naman ng partnership na may risk yung um, pagbili ng lupa. So, D is not liable for usually warranties. Yan ang kailangan nating tandaan dyan. Also, in the same example, it can happen that A obtains the knowledge before he becomes a partner in the partnership. Again, this is binding on the partnership if yung particular matter is, uh, itong knowledge na to is present to the mind of A or A still remembers the information. In number three, remember class here that the knowledge is acquired by a non-acting partner. So he is that the partner who is acting in a particular transaction. So the, the partner with knowledge is different from the acting partner. Now, the question is, binding ba yung knowledge ng isang non-acting partner? Uh, especially if the matter involves a transaction with the third person na pinapasukan nung isang acting partner. So remember here, class, that it is binding only on the partnership if yung partner with knowledge had reason to believe that the fact related 
to a matter which has some possibility of being subject of partnership business and number two if he was situated that he could communicate to the acting partner the particular matter before such acting partner gives binding effect to his act so yun ang kailangan yung tandaan if it is reasonably possible for the uh, partner with knowledge to communicate to the acting partner yung information na meron siya this is knowledge of the partnership so anyway again there's an example in your book please take a look at it so Article 1822 class talks about the duty of the partnership to be liable for a wrongful act or omission of a partner. So here, one of the partners commits a wrongful act or omission, but it is not only the partner na guilty ang magiging civil, civilly liable, but also the innocent partners, but subject to reimbursement from the guilty partner. Remember here that the liability of the partners are in solidum or, or solidary in accordance with 1824. So let's give an example. A, B, and C partners, uh, partners in ABC partnership. Itong si A, uh, while driving the uh, vehicle belonging to the partnership, uh, negligent siya, and he caused damages to the fence uh, of the residence of Y. So may bakuran si Y, nabangga ni... Um, a, yung fence ng bakuran ni Y. And nung nangyari to, he is using yung partnership vehicle and he is in the pursuit of the partnership business. So remember here, class, if Y asks for damages in court, the partnership is liable. The partners are liable, all of them. And the liability is solidary. Kasi nga, it, is, it occurs... Um, while in the performance of the partnership business and also it involves property of the partnership. So what you also have to remember here is that the innocent partners, B and C, remember they were not the negligent ones. They did not drive negligently. It was only A. The, the innocent partners can recover from the guilty partner who is A in this case. So remember 1822. 1823 naman is the liability for misappropriation. So here in 1823, a partnership has a duty to make good the loss, uh, which occurs due to misapplication or misappropriation of money or property of a third person. This comprises of two parts actually. So uh, number one, the partnership is liable to make good the loss if one partner acting within the scope of his authority receives money and then misapplies it. So in number one, the collecting partner who is authorized to collect, obviously, receives money and then misapplies the money. What else? Number two, the partnership is also liable to make good the loss if the partnership already received money or property of a third person and while it is in the custody of the partnership any one of the partners um, misappropriates yung money so nasa partnership fund na tapos anong ginawa isa sa mga partners misappropriate niya so anyway in these two cases remember the rules are the same if we go back to this uh, slide so partnership is liable yun ang kailangan yung tandaan and again, all the partners are liable solidarily for any loss. So, ang pinakaiba lang ng number one, ay, ng, uh, number one and number two here is that in number one, it is the collecting partner who misappropriates. In number two, it is any partner who misappropriates. But remember here in both cases that uh, the money or the property belongs to a third person and there is misappropriation partnership is liable what else uh, solidary liability imposed by 1824 for the liabilities um under 1822 and 1823 um also take note that it is not only the partners but also the partnership who is liable solidarily so let us also discuss yung partner by estopel and your partnership by estopel so uh, here for this topic, we will uh, 
give examples on Saturday, but we will uh, study today the concept or the theory. So anyway, there is, remember, partner, there is a partner by Estopel. If a person, through words written or verbal, uh, or through acts, directly represents himself as a partner in an existing partnership, and yung existing partnership na yon, they did not consent, or pwede naman itong taong to, directly represents himself as a partner in a non-existing partner. So, anong example niyan? Nagbigay na rin ako ng example, hindi ko na rin matiis. So, anyway, ako, sinabi ko, uy, partner ako sa X, Y, and Z. But, remember, ang X, Y, and Z, wala siyang kaalam-alam na ako ay isang uh, partner sa X, Y, and Z. In short, nagpapanggap lang ako na partner sa X, Y, and Z. Remember here that I am called a partner by Estopel because I directly misrepresented myself. What about if I mis misrepresented myself to be a partner in 1-2-3 partnership and wala naman talagang 1-2-3 partnership. Tapos sinama ko pa yung dalawang barkada. Oh, kunwari 1-2-3 partnership tayo. Remember class here that we are not actually partners but we are there is no actual partnership but we are partners by Estopel. Why? Because we directly misrepresented ourselves as partner in a non-existent partnership. What else? Um, number two, it can happen also that there is indirect representation. So, I allowed myself to be represented as a partner in an existing partnership without the consent of the partners or I allowed myself to be indirectly represented as a partner in a non-existing partnership with other people who are not really partners. So, same example. Uh, imbis na ako yung magsabi na ako ay partner, hindi, hinayaan ko yung kaibigan ko, yung barkada kong laging laseng. Oh, sabi ng barkada kong laging laseng. Itong si attorney, partner yan sa ABC. Eh, hindi naman ako partner sa ABC. Pero ako naman, hinayaan ko lang. I, I um, consented to the misrepresentation of my friend. Remember here that I am liable as a partner by Estopel. What else? Um, also, again, my friend na laging laseng, sinabi niya, ay alam ba si attorney, partner yan sa 1, 2, 3? Eh, wala namang, uh, wala namang uh, partnership na 1, 2, 3. Tapos, sinabi pa ng kaibigan kong laseng, dun sa 1, 2, 3 partnership, kasama ni attorney si B at saka si C. Oh, wala namang pala talaga, talaga kaming partnership ni B and C. Again, wala kaming partnership. Ako, si B and C, we have no partnership, but we can be considered as Partners by Estopel. Because remember, the partnership is non-existent. So what is the liability in case of uh, partners by Estopel? So what do you have to remember about the liability of partners by Estopel is that um, they are liable as uh, general partners. They are liable um, as for all, for all obligations as if they are partners but they are not entitled to the rights of uh, partners. So, yun ang kailangan nating tandaan. So, yung mga nanlokong, yung mga nagpanggap na partner and also yung mga kasama niya are liable as partners but they do not have the rights of partners. What else? How about in case of a partnership by Estopel, also covered by 1825? So, in partnership by Estopel, Merong isang existing partnership. And remember class, um, itong existing partnership na to, they consent that another person who is not part of the partnership be misrepresented as a partner. So let us say class A, B, and C partnership, hindi ako kasama. Tapos, um, sinabi ko nakasama ako sa ABC partnership. Pumayag itong mga partners. So, with respect to me, I am, there is with respect to me, we have, and, and yung partnership, we have a relationship. Ano yun? Yung meron kaming partnership by Estopel. So, here, remember, importante sa partnership by Estopel, existing partnership consents to the misrepresentation made by a third person. So, um, pwede rin, it can also happen that indirect ito. So, but ang importante dito is pumayag yung partnership. Indirect in such a way that I do not directly represent myself as a partner in XABC, tapos pumayag sila. But I allow somebody else to re represent me. Pero pumayag pa rin yung partnership. Yun ang importante sa partnership by Estopel. Papayag yung 
partnership. So anyway, uh, here remember that the partnership is primarily liable with his, his assets if it is insufficient. Liable yung mga partners and also the person who misrepresents himself as a partner will be liable. Examples on Saturday, uh, incoming partners, 1826. Uh, remember, ang duty ng incoming partners, they are liable for all obligations of the partnership. Even if the obligation uh, 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 did arise before he became a partner in the partnership. But remember, his liability is limited to his share in the uh, partnership uh, property. Yan. Kung ano lang yung kinontribute niya, hanggang dun lang yung li liability niya. For obligations incurred before he is a partner, but for obligations uh, incurred, occur, ano, incurred subsequently, remember that he is liable even up to his separate property. What else? Last one for today, preference of partnership creditors. Mas simple lang to class. Partnership creditors are preferred as to partnership assets. Personal creditors are preferred as to personal uh, assets. So, kung naniningil ang partnership creditors, tapos may partnership assets, unahin muna natin bayaran yung partnership creditors. Kung may natira, doon natin babayaran yung personal creditors ng bawat isang partner. So, remember, 1827. So, I will uh, see you class on Saturday. Um, Please take note of your assignment. Obviously, if you do not, you, you did not watch the entire video, hindi nyo malalaman na meron kayong assignment. Dan, 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 dan. So anyway, have a good day, class. Uh, thank you.